Our first question is from Simon. And Simon says, You have on several occasions in past podcasts mentioned how much you like the half kneeling press as an exercise. One of the several things you mentioned while extolling its virtues is that the exercise, paraphrasing you poorly, is its own coach. Yeah, that's not a bad way to say it. Uh, there are drills, exercises, uh, there's all kinds of issues in high performance that really your job as a coach is to just go, you know, kind of just nod your head and do this weird thing with your hands. Like, yeah, there you go, you know. Uh, which I think relates to almost forcing you to practice, get into good po a positioning. What other exercise have you put in that same category, ones which almost coach the movement pattern themselves, thus being a massive bang for your buck in the reduced risk of injury due to poor movement pattern category? Man, that's actually, uh, I got to tell you, in fact, this would make a great book. This would make a great workshop. Uh, Simon, hire me because there are exercises that I can show you and then walk out of the room. And if you do them right, you, you, you do them right. And if you do them wrong, you fall over, you know, something bad happens. So let's look at some of the things. Now, you know, I, 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 I'm a, I like the sport of powerlifting, but if I'm in an Olympic lifting meet and I snatch a weight or I clean and jerk a weight, no one ever, no, official ever turns my snatch or clean and jerk down by saying my my front squat or my overhead squat weren't deep enough. So the reason I bring this up is that I used to think that the back squat was one of those. And then the, the more, <laughs> once the internet came out and I realized <laughs> what, what I mean by squat and what I see on the internet aren't even close to each other most of the time. And, and then we have all these people pushing all these small variations that might be good for the sport of powerlifting or might have a really small thing there, they're not good overall. Um, I think uh, deadlifting uh, is is, pr is pretty obvious. But again, you know, uh, I, I know of a lot of people who've done deadlifts, have no problem, no problem, one, no problem. And then that one day, and usually there's a story, usually it's something, a bad night's sleep or snow, you know, they had to shovel snow or something like that, or, you know, do something, you know, they had to help, bringing groceries and slipped coming in that one workout and the back goes up. I do think deadlifts and squats are marvelous exercises, but I don't think they fit in this question. And, but I, let, I hope you understand what I'm trying to do with you, Simon, because I'm trying to set up a little stage here. Uh, again, the bench press, you know, you go to any high school in America. Uh, I always say that the, the strongest person in the, in the weight room in a high school is the person deadlifting all the weights off the kids' chests. Uh, a lot of kids don't touch their chest. A lot of kids, you know, use their chest as a shock absorber, bounce and go. So now let's answer your question. So there's a lot of exercises, a lot of the bodybuilding exercises um, aren't, aren't going to really fit perfectly here. But let's go through my little one. And here's the nice thing, Simon. I think I already know. I think I already know the answer. You mentioned uh, half kneeling presses, and I know I've been singing the praises of half kneeling presses. And I'm sure those of you who are longtime listeners or readers will realize that I go down sometimes a rabbit hole or whatever. The, I just start to talk about something, 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 and then you know before you know it, I'm you know falling in love with something else. But the half kneeling press uh, in that position, if if my if my left knee knee is down and I'm pressing with my left hand, I feel a certain kind of hip flexor press. If I keep that same knee down and switch hands, things change a little bit. Just doing the half kneeling press will teach you that the press, the overhead, the vertical press, is a full body movement. And, I, and so that is a win. Um, another exercise is just simply hanging. If you hang from a bar, whether it's this way, uh, pull-up grip, chin-up grip, or parallel grip, or any kind of grip you want to come up with, I'm sure there's others, uh, it seems to do that magic for stretching out the the, uh, the shoulder girdle. Again, today I went in the right weight room. Uh, we had, we, I've had a lot of construction on the house in the last year, and we, had, we finally finished a major project on Saturday. And, you know, it tenses me up. I go and I do my morning hang and I hear it sounded like it sounded like the snap, crackle and pop that a really good chiropractor ha has given me in the past. And I just felt great. So half doing press the hang. 
I think the goblet squat and the goblet squat where you sit at the bottom and curl, those can be these kinds of exercises where, uh, you know, if you're doing, if you're sitting at the bottom of goblet squat and you're doing curls, you know what I'm talking about. And then from there, the goblet squat into the overhead squat drill. I think you're about to see, most of those of you listen to me a lot, what I'm about to be do, what I'm about to do here. And then of course, I think the most, there's two exercises in the loader carry family that give tons of feedback. And that's the waiter walk and the suitcase carry. And you're welcome for me inventing those names, uh, though I never get credit for it. Even though I wrote articles on them before anybody ever even, most of the trainers ever even started their careers. I gotta remind myself about that. Basically what I'm saying is that little silly perfect workout I have, and we have a couple of videos on it. I also have a, uh, uh, I don't know if it's up yet, but it should be right away. I have a, a, a little one that I'll do if I only have more, a little bit of equipment or oh, what I'll do, like if I'm at a, uh, a hotel or something like that on a road trip, uh, or even if I'm driving and I just need to <clears throat> get something going in my body. You know, sometimes when you drive, you just feel like you just get locked and blocked, you know. Um, <clears throat> but it is the half kneeling press, the hang, hip thrusts. If you can do the, uh, the magic drill or what I call uh, the magic drill or its cousin, the Bulgarian goat bag swing, those are, those are also pretty idiot proof. The goblet squat into the overhead stick squat drill the suitcase uh, carry or the waiter walk, depending on what your, your personal needs are. Um, these are all those exercises that are the biggest bang for the buck I've noticed. Now, clearly, I mean, when, I, when I'm when i making my best progress, and I've said this before, the two exercises that I could, if I do clean and press, especially if it's clean, press, 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 and uh, squat snatch, boom, squat snatch uh, with the, uh, with suitcase carries, if I follow that with the walk, there you go. There's another perfect workout with all the bang for the buck. <clears throat> so what I'm hoping you're hearing, Simon, if I didn't make it clear enough, the half kneeling press, the hang, the gobble squat into the overhead squat, the suitcase, let's just stick with that way you walk down, the suitcase carry, those exercises are going to be self-correcting. The, the waiter walk, if the hand comes too forward, it's not going to last long. You're going to self-correct on those. You are going to get a lot of the benefits of mobility and flexibility while you do each and every rep. And if you do do goblet squats, followed by overhead squats, goblet squats, like for a man, maybe the 24 kilo and just a broomstick for the overhead, you know, by the time you get to, to rep eight, your eyes are open. Your your heart and lungs are pounding away. So I, I like that. Now, from there, when you slide over into the barbell family, I think the squat clean press and the squat snatch, those are also, uh, it's your own coach. I don't, when someone's cleaning and pressing, you'll see them, like sometimes you'll, you'll notice in, in, when someone will do a first rep, they'll get to about here and realize that their their, their alignment was wrong bring the weight back down, you know, you'll see them tighten their butt, you know, expand their chest, you know, make the big shelf here and press. So that's self-correcting. I don't have to do any of it. So the perfect workout probably has, it's probably also, it's your own coach, which is why I like to do it. I do the perfect workout now three days a week. And if all you did was a perfect workout, the half million press, uh, three sets of eight, both sides, hang 30 seconds for three rounds of that. So half million press, half million press, hang three rounds. I do one set of hard hip thrusts. I do, sometimes I do the magic drill, but let's just leave that one out. Uh, one set of eight, five to eight reps on the goblet squat, overhead squat, suitcase carry. And then I go for a walk after that. And I think that does for me, you know, eight to 15 minute workout and a 30 to 45 to an hour walk, it, it it's the biggest bang for the buck for me. I, I hope I answer that question. Uh, I think I have videos on my YouTube site of everything I just told you. And Simon, uh, you, uh, you win for uh, best question of the podcast so far. Having said that now, and I thank you, Kane shows up next. 
So Simon says in Raising Cain, thanks for the names this week, guys.